So I think I should introduce myself a little bit. I love handbags. I love shoes. I love clothes. I like accessories. I like any fashionable. The reason being that I grew up in New York City. And as you all know, New York City is one of the trendiest and fashionable place in the entire world. And the streets are like runways. You can clearly observe how people dress, how people style themselves, how people carry themselves. And so eventually, as I get older, I learned how to dress up myself. I learned how to style my outfits. And eventually, I venture into the luxury community uh, like we all do here. So in this video, I am going to show you the top five favorite Chanel bags because I think in my past videos I kept talking about a mess a lot and to be honest Chanel is actually my favorite brand as of now I love a mess I start to love a mess more and more as I get a little older but at the same time Chanel remains that special like brand and it still has that sweet spot in my heart that is still my favorite if not one of my favorites and so let's get started I want to introduce to you I guess this will be my favorite my favorite Chanel bag in my collection it was it wasn't until uh, senior year I think it was a senior year in college that I learned about Chanel so back then the luxury that I could have that I could dream of would be a coach bag or maybe a Michael Michael Kors bag I was searching up like the recommendations of the classic handbags and Chanel classic flap came up in my search and that's the first time ever that I learned about the brand and prior to that believe it or not I have not, not heard the brand Chanel at all in my life in my entire life so I was amazed by sorry about the noise <laughs> that was a coffee machine um, so anyway um, so I was amazed by how classy the bag looks and how pretty it is, not how simple it is, but it just got all, like all the features. It will CC buckle, the leather strap, and the quilted pattern on the bag, and fell in love with it right away. Back then, I was like, I wonder how much it is. <laughs> so I looked it up, and it was. It was not too crazy like nowadays. It was still very expensive, especially when you telling college student who didn't make any money at all. I remember it was a pretty like steep price to me, and I was like, was I ever gonna get one? <laughs> and then I graduated from college, and I started working, and after paying off my student loans and I work extra overtime in that month trying to get a classic flap. I worked very hard. I remember I was working so hard that I did a lot of doubles and eventually I saved up enough money to get me my first Chanel classic flap and this is it. I was so elated um, when I finally could get to the boutique. I was very nervous because I prior to that I don't think I had ever been to a high fashion uh, luxury house like that before. I I entered the store. I was a little timid, and then eventually I made eye contact with my sales associate, and she was lovely. She was very welcoming, and she said, "How can I help you?" And I said. I would want a classic flat and she's like okay specifications that you require for your classic flat I said I want 
a small size or medium size or I should say medium large and so she's like okay um, do you have any preference for the letters and I said um, what's that mean because <laughs> I was not familiar with Chanel uh, that much back then not at least not yet so she's like well we have two major letters um, one is lambskin which is very soft and very luxurious to the touch but at, um, but at the same time, it's prone to scratches. And we have the caveat, which is the scratch of resistance. And back then, in my head, I was thinking, this is probably going to be my only Chanel bag. This is probably going to be my only luxury uh, handbag um, after all. So I said, yes, I would want the caveat letter if that's available. And then she continued and gone on. And then she continued and went on and asked me, would you like uh, the gold hardware or the silver hardware? And that one was easy for me. Back then, I don't think I had too much gold tone, uh, like anything, like any accessories or like jewelry or anything like that. So, so I said, yes, I would go with silver hardware. And that is it. And she came back to me and said, you got lucky because sometimes we don't have the EX back that the customer would ask for but this happened to be the last one of the day for me so I was like yes thank you I would take that that was in December 2012 all right just in time for a Christmas gift for, me, for myself back then so the price I paid back in 2012 and I still have a sticker right here and it was four thousand and four hundred dollars and to me back then, that is a huge, a huge sum of money. I know to you, to you guys, that's like, like nowadays, it's like nothing, especially when you talk about Chanel. So, but that's how much I pay for my first bag. I would, to me, like I said, to me, it was so expensive. And I said to myself, okay, this is the bag that I'm gonna treasure, and this is the bag that I'm gonna use, and that would be it. Of course, <laughs> that was not it. Um, as you can see here, this is my first Chanel classic flap. Still remain one of my favorites. And moving on, next, there's no particular order in terms of how much I love them. I'm not ranking them based on uh, which one is my most favorite and which one is my least favorite as of now. I'm just going based on the timeline. So. This medium large classic flap was purchased in 2012. So the next bag was, uh, let me think, um, this one actually. I purchased this in back in 2015. And this is the small size in caviar leather, brush gold hardware, which is very special in my opinion. So this is the light beige caviar small classic flap that I got in 2015. This is bought with love back then. Um, I bought it from a reseller. The condition was pretty good. Um, when I bought it, it was almost as new, and I have been using it over the years. So now um, it's not it's not as what it was. Like, slightly used up, but it was it's still very good condition in my opinion. And I know this bag is so expensive nowadays for for beige and caviar and gold hardware. This combo is crazy in terms of price among the classic flaps. And you guys know what? I almost sold the bag about two years ago. I almost did. Because back then I was not using it for a period of time and I was thinking it's just sitting in my closet and I wasn't using it you know that much um, I think I should sell it and I'm glad I didn't the resale price of this bag is like phenomenal that's all I can say so back then I paid only $1,800 can you believe that <laughs> back then in 2015 I paid only about $1,800 for this it's like one of my biggest germs that I found 
on a reselling market. And this bag, I don't really quite remember uh, when it was made, but I can look into that later. But anyways, so it is definitely a vintage piece because you know, I think it's at least like 15 years old already for this bag. And can you believe that? That's why Chanel holds this rare was soon out because it's bags are made that it can last for generations and it can pass on to your daughter, your granddaughters um, if they're still in good condition. This one is made in France, which is something I like about. Do you guys care? Please comment below. Do you guys care about where the bag is made? Especially like where the handbag is made, like either like France, Italy or in Spain. Do you care at all? Um, and when you are buying a Chanel bag, do you inspect the bag trying to see where it's made and then make your decision whether you're going to buy the bag based on that? Uh, so please comment below. I'm very eager to hear what people think. So that's number two. And moving on, the next bag would be this one right here. I know this is one of their major hits uh, back in, let's say, 2019. I adore the pearl details and I believe the pearls are made from a material that they harvest from, from trees, if I'm not wrong, and then they make it into all this like nicely even tone of big pearls. And I first noticed the bag, it was actually during the trip in Singapore. My husband and I did this huge sort of Asia, Asia trip in January 2020. And I believe this bag was released in uh, late 2000, 2019. And when I was in Singapore that time in 2020, and I saw the bag on display as I passed um, you know, Chanel, I was like, Oh my god, this bag is actually very pretty in, in real life than uh, just looking at the pictures. So I was like, let's go eat first because I don't want to make impulse purchase and I want to make a right decision whether I should buy this bag or not. So we went to eat uh, at one of the restaurants across uh, the street from the Chanel boutique in Singapore. I was eating, um, I was chatting with my husband and then at the same time i was just checking my emails yes our flight was the next day um so that was our last day in singapore and i didn't i was actually didn't buy much at all for, uh, for the trip uh yet at that point so i was like i i want to i want to buy something uh from chanel uh, like I said before, I usually when I travel to a place and it, and there's a, and if there's a Chanel boutique in that place, I would like to get something. I really want to have this back in my collection. I think it, it is a very memorable piece from Chanel uh, among all the bags that they have made. So I said to myself, so let's eat. So I checked my email just making sure everything's okay and we can leave Singapore th on the next day back to US. And I read that our flight got canceled from the airline. I was so traumatized. I was so shocked. And that whole night, my husband and I were just dealing with the airline. And so I was totally not in the mood of going into the Chanel and do shopping at all. All I was thinking was how to get ourselves a plane ticket to go back to the US. So that was the priority back then because we we both um, had to return to work two days from that night. So we meaning that we, we did not have a choice but to return to US. I was very upset. I was angry. So I gave up the shopping. But to keep the story short, uh, of course, my husband and I <laughs> eventually uh, got um, you know, rescheduled to a different flight, same day that we're supposed to return to US, but we got an earlier uh, time slot. So it turned out to be okay. Of course, we had to pay a little extra fees for the rescheduling, but I was still happy. So we got back, and a few months later, I saw the bag again online, 
that reminded me, oh my God, I wanted a bag so badly in Singapore. So I was looking all over the place later in 2021. So the bag is also out in the boutiques uh, by then, I believe. So I was looking into the reselling market and finally I found a few on Fashion File and it was pretty good condition. It was listed as excellent condition and it was a price that I could accept. So I finally purchased it. So this is my beloved uh, bag that I, that I still adore. Uh, I don't tend to use like a new item that I acquire right away and hence you still see like this fashion file tag uh, still being attached to the bag. I haven't used this bag for once which makes me wonder if this is actually not a good purchase but I would say as a handbag lover collecting a handbag um, is okay. <laughs> I think we're okay. I think we're allowed to do that. So moving on that's number three and number four would be this one. It was purchased in November 2021. So this was the next one in the timeline for today. It's one of my favorites. And because to me, it's just a, just a cute little vanity bag that can hold so much. You'll be surprised how much you can hold. It's very spacious inside. Um, and I know a lot of YouTubers had done an extensive review on this bag itself. So so this um, is caviar leather, um, light gold hardware or beige gold hardware. This bag was also quite an ordeal to get. I I think this bag, this vanity case was first released in 2020 or it was either early 2020s or late 2019. So it was around that time when I actually wanted it it was the summer of 2020 it was July 2020 that I finally went to the boutique uh, store in uh, New York City uh, the one on 57th Street which is the flagship store in US I believe because I think that it, it is because it's got like four or five floors and it's huge um, and they usually have good stocks so that's why I tried the store when I trying to get the bag. So I went into the store and it was during COVID. So no one around, like it was pretty dead, like on the street, inside the, the stores. Uh, they did, yes, I had to make a reservation uh, back then. Um, I went to the door and the security took down my information. So. I was like, fine, you know, it was only about an hour, so I waited. So I, I went back uh, in the afternoon uh, for my appointment and I asked them about the bag and they were like, yes, I know what I know what you're talking about, like a vanity case, a small, um, like rectangular shape. So, uh, so she went on to check their inventory, but unfortunately they did not have anything. I was like, um, you know, is there any way that you could um put me on a wait list of some sort if you have one and she's like yes no problem so i looked kind of disappointed because i thought this was such a cute bag it could even fit my iphone um my iphone 8 plus back then so i i knew it was fit because i saw like i said i saw like some youtube um videos on that even though it's small but it can it, it could fit my phone it could fit so much when it first uh, came out I think it was only uh, around fifteen hundred dollars yes it was only about fifteen hundred dollar which in terms of Chanel this is actually uh, a good value in terms of the price and how much you can hold uh, and the look uh, and all these features and also a strap that you can actually adjust the length you can see I make adjustment inside the bag and this is actually a top can be a top handle bag as of now so that's why I want it so much but I couldn't get one and instead at the end of our appointment she asked me is there anything else you want so I said I could browse around the accessory and uh, the custom jewelries and this is what I got eventually that day this is such a lovely Tiffany blue um, old case that I still treasure um, 
I was still occasionally texted um, my sales associate and asked her if um, she had any uh, bag, uh, you know, new inventory coming in. Uh, and I was very open-minded with the colors. I know back then they also make uh, in navy and uh, like a fuchsia pink or something like that, or like a pink color. Um, back then I think mostly what they had was lambskin options. So, and I said, well, I was all very open-minded. So any color, I, I was totally, I would be totally okay with it. And, but she said no she didn't respond back to me most of the time so usually when they don't respond back to you that means it's a no like no they do not have anything or they don't have the thing that you're asking for um so i was pretty disappointed uh that year and then later on uh we went on to a trip to la to los angeles uh in november 2021 it was a good trip because you know the weather was nice. I don't like humid place, and as you all might know, California is a pretty dry uh, state. And so I enjoyed the trip, and of course, like I said, when I go to a new place, when I travel to some menu, as long as they have a Chanel boutique, I would like to go in and check out what they have, right? <laughs> uh, that's something that I have kept saying over and over again already. So I first went into the store, and they did not have anything. Then I tried the next day in um, Beverly Hills. Oh my god, I already saw some on the display window. That was good news for me. So I requested the bag and she pulled out a new one for me. And I was like, yes, I'm taking it. I double checked the condition and I said, yes, I'm taking it. Do you know what makes it worth it for the weight for me? It was um, the fact that the one I got is in caviar leather. I'm just not a very careful person, so caviar leather is definitely a yes for me. Uh, so I am actually happy at the end, although I did pay so much more than uh, what I would have paid if I was successful in getting one back in 2020. Uh, the price I paid was uh, about 2500 retail price plus tax. So it's still not bad, it's still not bad, but I just wish I could get it uh, right away uh, when, when they first got out, uh, when I wanted it in, back in 2020. But like I said, the Kabe leather just makes up for it. So I'm happy with that. Lastly, number five would be this little mini flap here. Navy color mini flap uh, with top handle. Probably not everyone's cup of tea, although most people love this bag because I have seen the bag being carried around a lot on the street and so this bag is also in a beige gold or like a light gold um, hardware that they use and it's actually a 2021 um, collection that got the metal tag uh, instead of um, like the zero sticker so I bought this from a reseller, again, Coco Approved. I mentioned it in my, one of my last videos. It was actually the first item that I bought from them. Um, Coco Approved is a reseller based in uh, Hong Kong. Um, I highly recommend them. I don't get any commission from them. I'm new to YouTube, so I'm not trying to sell you something that I don't know. Um, anyways, the prices are very uh, fair, in my opinion. So I got from them last year, 2021, I won, like I was really amazed by how clever Chanel was in making a top handle on top of like the, the bags. They eventually made a top handle for the vanity case as well. So so that was a trend among Chanel bags, uh, handbags. And I think the top handle is such a good option because sometimes you might not want to carry it as a shoulder bag, crossbody bag. A lot of times I think the top handle makes the bag even dressier and classy. It's more suitable for the evening um, attire or the evening special occasions. So that's why although I ha already have some uh, other mini flap, I still wanted to, to uh, wanted to get a mini flap with top handle. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, the, the 
other colors, especially black, or especially cowboy leather is very premium. And so I was searching for other neutral colors. And navy, to me, is uh, one of the best alternative to blacks because it could almost look black a lot of times. But at the same time, under natural light, it's like navy. It was about retail price. That's, that's why I didn't mind paying um, for that price to, to get a bag that's not black. I bought it and I, and I bought it out to um, one of our date nights with my husband. And something happened to it. Something happened. And I was very devastated uh, at the moment. So we were going to... Uh, a dress concert for, for that date night and I was on the passenger seat and I placed my handbag right, right next to me on the right side so that's uh, between me and the car door so you can see how the story went right as I opened the car door after we parked our car and tried to get into the event uh, venue I forgot about the fact that I placed the bag in between me and the car door. It was a rainy night. <laughs> it, got, it got worse, right, as, as the story goes. It was a rainy night, so the, the ground was wet and, and muddy. Um, and I was like, oh my god, my, my bag fell. And so I picked up the bag and I inspected it right away under the dim light of our car. <laughs> and. As surprisingly, I was relieved to find out that I did not have any scratches. The lambskin that Chanel made nowadays is extremely delicate in my opinion compared to some of the vintage Chanel that I own. Uh, I think that's like a common fact that we all know by now that vintage lambskin is just so much more durable. It's just so much better than in terms of quality. So anyway, I was surprised that the, there's no scratches. And when I inspect a closer after I got home with better lights, I actually found that I got a tiny scratch on the CC uh, turn lock here. And, but it's pretty tiny and I'm happy. So what can I say as of the story? Um, I would say lambskin, it is more easy to get damaged. But at the same time, if you love it so much, if because you love the look of it and the, and the touch, um, I would say still just get what you love in lambskin. Don't force yourself to get caveat only because it's more scratch resistant. Because you love lambskin so much, I think as long as you enjoy the bag, even though there are scratches, each scratch is going to tell you a story about the bag, right? It's going to tell a story to other people. So I think that's what made uh, your handbag yours. So that is it for today. Um, before you go, just remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will guarantee that I will post more topics uh, that we all love uh, among our handbag community and it's going to be high quality. Uh, so subscribe and I will see you guys all next time. Bye bye!